Hello. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, thank you for joining us in the fifth session of our conference. Like other sessions, we will be there will be four presentations. The first presentation is on non intrusive semi automating modeling of ordinary buildings. And David will present this, uh, this re his research. And now I invite him to uh, start for his presentation. Thank you very much for the organizers. Yeah. Okay. I think you can see now the the presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the organizers for, for the welcoming um, all the the work of the of the symposium. Um, I I will present uh, this uh, this paper, is, which is uh, co-authored also with uh, Gisela Lameira, and my supervisors Plastor Lizancos, Isabel Caposo, and Virgilio Borges Pereira. This uh, paper is about uh, ordinary collective uh, housing buildings, um, which uh, is a quite relevant to topic because it's the the greater part of our built heritage, um, we will present um, a grammar based on, on the geometric capacity of floors to accommodate rooms um, and the stairs. Uh, we will present um, a programmation in RP um, and uh, um, the application of this script to, uh, to um, a study case in Porto. Um, we will finish with um, with um, uh, some um, some discussion about the underlying uh, about an ordinary um, model. So let's start. Um, I don't know if I can put this here. Maybe better. Yeah. So um, uh, I began with this uh, pre presentation because um, um, we we talked about it in the in the break, the at least in my degree, and I'm sure many colleagues of, of mine. Um, in our degrees, we study the old city with the old methods, and this is quite uh, limited to to understand uh, the whole city. Uh, our paper is not focused in that uh, well-known part of our cities. It's focused in this, in the other parts. So um, this paper um, tries to, uh, to, to, um, to understand how to deal with the majority of built environment. Uh, uh, we know that uh, we have the necessity of global solutions aiming at a quantitative response. Um, uh, we would like to, to understand the origin you know, and the characteristics of this, um, of this built heritage. Um, for this, the concept about uh, ordinary, or you can uh, call it um, a normal or regular or um, uh, everyday buildings, uh, if it did exist as, um, as a category that uh, includes several types. Um, if it is, uh, exists as a category, what will be the characteristics and the patterns? So um, uh, let's start with um, 
with an um, exercise. I'm sure that uh, many of you have um, a practical problem. You, you see, you are trying to understand the building um, from the exterior. You see that um, maybe there are here a couple of rooms, maybe there are similar rooms because the window is similar. Here they can be um, upstairs. And uh, we, we do that um, unconsciously. So uh, we are trying to, to do it um, uh, more powerful uh, and better and try to estimate the entire layout of, um, of, of different buildings. Um, um, this is uh, also useful to this kind of, um, of uh, models uh, and it's uh, nowadays a, a challenge. So let's uh, start with the, um, a bit of the revision of the literature. Uh, we can see on the left part uh, some pioneers uh, on, on models on, um, on cultural um, Levi Strauss, Levi Strauss on cultural uh, models, uh, Alexander about the patterns of Portas um, uh, about um, the, the, the meta project and the meta program. Uh, we, this uh, research is also based in, in learning from the morphological uh, schools, especially from, from France. Um, um, this is our first in, incursion in the shape grammars, um, which uh, we think uh, that could be a key for, to, to understand that. Um, so there are other shape grammars that try to, to do the same, to um, predict or estimate the interior layouts, uh, model them um, with uh, different results. Um, uh, for doing these uh, shape grammars, we also take into account notions like uh, topology, like, uh, ontologies, like explained by, I think, Wasim Javi was uh, here yesterday explaining that. So uh, this is uh, quite important uh, um, having um, systems that makes difference with the facade, the partitions um, and the party walls. So we understand um, with the first part, um, trying to, to look for a pattern in, in very different uh, buildings. Um, um, we we think we could uh, find this uh, this pattern about uh, the rooms in contact uh, with the facade, the rooms of a certain size in different kind of buildings, and we will use that to to create an inductive uh, shape grammar. Uh, this shape uh, grammars um, is uh, have two parts: the one for the rooms and other for the dwellings, the apartments of the flats. Um, 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 is based in curvilinear um, uh, coordinates. So uh, this allow us, this enable us to, to apply them to a regular uh, perimeters. Here you can have an example, um, um, Raúl Bacallau type. Um, and we can see here how we can create circles of a certain size to define probable uh, rooms and um, with uh, some rules to um, uh, control the access um, to those rooms uh, from the inside. You can see there the, the drawings are also this, um, this workflow, which uh, says the same. Um, we will see the second part of the, um, of the grammar for the second part of the grammar you, we use the, the centers of mass to try to locate, uh, we, we use the, the size of the floor plan to, to estimate if it is a, a, a floor for the one or two or three apartments or more. Um, afterwards, we use the, the center of mass to understand uh, which is, uh, where is probably to be the, the stairs. So we firstly applied this, um, this kind of archetypical scheme 
uh, and this allow us to to understand that um, the stars could be there and um, the stars could be um, fusioned with the with um, exterior space or not. This is not yet a, a programmed. Um, but this um, this will be just um, uh, an interesting thing if, if we don't uh, program it. Um, for programming it, uh, we have to choose um, RP, the API, um, the app, the API, um, uh, um, the API from ArcGIS, which uh, uses uh, Python. You can see there uh, um, some extracts of the code. Basically, it takes um, uh, an input and uh, we define an, an output, and it's all the time using uh, one, two, three inputs, some objects there, um, to make an, oper um, an operation and uh, write them in, in a part of the, of the memory. Um, and this has some particularities because um, the previous um, shape grammar uh, dealing with rooms, it's quite difficult to implement. So we, we try to simplify it, even uh, losing some of the um, characteristics and some of the uh, position just to make it um, uh, more efficient and uh, more feasible. So um, uh, in, we, we do not, uh, we don't um, draw um, uh, circles, but uh, instead, we we do a, a line uh, in, with a certain um, deepness, with a certain depth from the facade. So in this way, we can uh, simulate uh, the same uh, the same effect uh, in the same in this implementation of the same shape grammars. Um, we uh, just uh, if um, if um, room. Uh, there is no place to to the facade. We just um, uh, uh, delete it uh, uh, because it uh, it is more simple to to implement. So we have these differences, uh, which is a a kind of loss of uh, of uh, accuracy. And um, uh, in this case, you can see how um, we we do this. Um, uh, this uh, um, this application of the center of mass, we calculate the center of mass of each apartment, and um, in in the in the middle of that, uh, we will suppose that will be the the uh, the stars. So moving on, uh, this is the the workflow. If you have interest, uh, you have uh, everything on the paper. Um, uh, and uh, in the paper, you have the reference to the scripts. So you have everything um, that will be on my presentation. So you can uh, see it uh, later. So um, the potential of, of this uh, is that we can uh, process hundreds and hundreds of cases, which is quite, uh, quite interesting to be uh, really useful. Um, to, um, this is an inductive programmer, so we need to test it. Um, for test it, we, we chose um, um, an information a database from, um, a, from a, a, a PhD from Gisela Alameda, a PhD done in, the, in FAUT, in the University of Porto, um, uh, which um, analyzed different typologies in Porto with uh, this kind of, um, of understanding of the morphology or the urban morphology, this kind of understanding of the typology and studying some examples using graphs um, in, a, in a very um, sophisticated way, in a very powerful way. So we have uh, this information. Uh, for this information we have, uh, we had to to, to create a, data, a database in GIS to um, be able to, uh, to, uh, to do the comparison with the, 
with the results of the same grammar. Uh, you have the database on, on Zenodo, so it's also accessible with database. With this database, we can do um, uh, cool things like um, uh, extract the doors and the and the and the windows. Um, I, I don't know if you can see, maybe not, but uh, you can see it uh, on the paper. We, we have a little script uh, which converts the, the simple uh, lines into uh, walls with a certain thickness and, um, and the doors and the, and the windows. So, uh, and you can, uh, you, you have access to that script too. So um, there is a quite a, a versatile um, um, very interoperable database. And with this database, we just use for this comparison, uh, this part, just the main rooms and the uh, staircases. So we have uh, this um, database, um, 100 um, cases in, in Porto, and the results of, um, of, the, um, of the shape grammar is like this. As you can see, if the um, perimeter is, um, is regular and it's orthogonal, the result is also orthogonal. But if the, perim uh, the perimeter is quite complex, the result is um, complex. So this is based, as I said, uh, on um, curvilinear um, coordinates. Um, I, I forgot to say that to do the, the division between the, the rooms, the, uh, we use the um, uh, tessellation, um, uh, Voronoi tessellation. This is, uh, this is why uh, the, the result is so angular, but it is just a, a, a specific thing just to, to do a, a, a quicker result. So uh, on, this, um, on this comparison, we did an um, analytical and qualitative comparison uh, and also a quantitative, um, uh, uh, quantitative uh, comparison. Um, the coincidence of the number of rooms, it's uh, almost, uh, it's uh, about 80% uh, 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 and uh, the coincidence of the position of the stairs uh, is um, about 70% uh, 70, 70 um, uh, This is made with, um, with, uh, with circles of a certain a size, a three meters of diameter. Um, we will try to improve that. Uh, we will see if there are differences between the decades. You, you see the discussion in the, okay, okay, 15 minutes. Uh, you see the discussion on, on the paper. Um, it's not correlated to that. The, the standards are the same during the, the first half of the, of the, um, of the century. But this this was very correlated to the size of the of the of the floor, so um, this um, allow us to introduce that in the same um, model can be different standards and it it is um, it is uh, that the um, the model that um, allows us to understand uh, and to make the comparison of the different standards. This is uh, some implementations and some new practices. Um, uh, I would like to, to spend just uh, uh, 30 seconds uh, talking about the conclusion. So um, this, um, this empirical research supports the existence of uh, ordinary category of buildings. Um, we, um, this uh, repetitive spatial patterns uh, enables us to empirical uh, define it. Um, uh, in, in Porto, uh, the previous research uh, found 14 types, uh, which, has, uh, uh, which are um, compatible, compatible with this uh, unique um, ordinary model. Um, um, uh, this is a, dis a discussion. Ordinary, it's not uh, typical and it's not uh, generic. We can discuss it later. Um, uh, the results are uh, quite successful. So for an um, previous estimation that could be useful in, in, in urban uh, studies, uh, I, I would like to say that that could be useful in, 
cost energy or habitability, habitability uh, simulations um, uh, that um, this uh, research support that, that safe grammars can be an improvement and a useful uh, tool for um, for the uh, to, to study um, uh, buildings and to study the urban features. Uh, uh, you can see there the references uh, if you want to to go for it. Um, thank you very much for for your attention. Sorry. We thank David Pereira for his presentation and now we would like to continue with the second presentation of this session. Uh, the paper is going to be presented by Moen Fuad Marashi and the paper is titled The Use of Public Space, The Vitality of Urmia Bazaar. Now I give the floor to you. Hello everyone. Uh, just uh, it's sharing now. No, no. You have to, go to the Zoom. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, I'm Mohamed Fatmarashi from University of Lisbon. Faculty of Architecture, School of uh, Lisbon School of Architecture. We're going to discuss about the public space and what we're going to working is about how the public space use and what's the approach between the, uh, what's the relation between the use and what's happening in the public space through the time. As you know, public space itself is one of the hottest, we can say debates in all the uh sciences regarding to the urbanism and architecture but most of the people are discussing about public space as it is in economical social uh, formal or something like that and the dynamic on interaction between the people and who are using the space and uh, discussing about the public space as a socio-cultural uh, product and at the same time, economical product is a bit uh, lost. And we're trying to go through this opinion about the context in this context. At the same time, when we're discussing about the public space and the use, we have to know that the public space is not itself uh, just so uh, single, uh, parameter and we can discuss it in different layers in different countries and in different cultures. Uh, one of the most important the public spaces in the Middle East and probably we can say in East, uh, mostly in Arabs, uh, Moorish and other countries like that is Bazaar. Bazaar is one of the hearts of as David C in Iran, it's the heart of the city that uh, is going to, it's a mo big mall, but using for connecting at the same time the, the places. Some of the, I don't know if from here, anybody except you visiting some countries like Iran or Istanbul. And when we're talking about the bazaar, it's great mall, but it's not completely private. It's completely public and everybody can use and work through that. We, in this uh, research, we try to do an analysis about the public space and the special analysis by the, for the bazaar to see how it works through the time 
and the interaction between the use and the space, how it's going on. Uh, our case is in Urmia, as you see, in northwest of Iran, and this small block is the heart of the city. It's the heart of the center of the social meeting, economical meetings, and everything that we can discuss about that. Um, the whole block is like this, and it transferred. We're going to discussing how it transferred during the last 15 years. And what is the effect of the transformation of the, this is small square on the, of course it's not very small, but this square on the old black. Uh, to be more under, uh, to be more familiar with the bazaar, as you see, we have here in the right picture, we have the roads and blocks, all of them are pedestrian and all of the space is covered. So if we're going furthermore, you can see what's happening inside. This is what we're calling bazaar. In Islamic countries mostly, and the origin of all of these are coming from Iran at, uh, and they uh, distribute it in all of the other countries over there uh, in Middle East. So we have a narrow, at the same time covered space according to the probably climate, and all of the interactions are happening over there. We have different land uses, not just commercial. We have mosques, we have schools, we have baths uh, as a public baths over there, like the baths that you have in uh, Roman time. And it's going to be used for different actions. So by these two, uh, three or four pictures, we're going furthermore to see what's happening in surrounding. This area was completely changed during the 15 to 20 years ago. And we lost a big block in here. We want to see if we lost that big block in here, what's the effect on the uh, roots of the bazaar according to the spatial analysis by using the space syntax method. Uh, if we are looking to these uh, pictures, it is for, what we have now as a context of the bazaar and the same block, we have the square in here. And at the same time, we have the, on the grave, you have the uh, covered public spaces. And this is the context with the same, but what was before in 2003 was like this. We don't have that square in here, the shape of the streets, the form of the streets, the Blocks are completely changed and what is here? The grays are the same for the covered space. So for being very, uh, going very sharp to the uh, context, we need to understand what's happening through the space. So we use what Hillier and uh, space syntax said, what is the uh, relation between the form and subject of the context of the city and the behavior of the people or the use of the space. So we try to, uh, for that small block, which is in here, we try to make uh, all the axial lines of the city for 2000 meter buffer area surrounding that uh, small block to see what's happening. And we analyze the space for different radiuses of the, 400, 800, 1200, and 2400. This is the axial map of the same place that blocks for the 2003. As you see, the measures of the space syntax integration choice and the others, this is the integration map of the HH as a global measure of the space syntax. As you see, the reds are more used spaces by the people. And all of these reds, uh, the hot lights are the use, more used spaces. And if we are going more focused, you see the roots of Bazaar are also very used. And they are also red with the integration of 2.91. It means we have a very good integration in that part comparing to the city. It's not local measure. It's all of them are in global. And later in the 2018, 
we have the same space and the same uh, axial map of the city, but it increased to 2.94, 94, I mean. And if we more focused on this, that small block, it increased to be like this. As you see, by changing that square in 2018, comparing with the past, we have, we lost some of the spaces in here and they lost the color, but it doesn't mean they lost the integration, just they lost the color. It's according to the uh, color range probably, but it's not very, it's not going to show us the behavior of the space. It's just showing that space is going to be more used and we have the same use of the space through the time. What we need, as Hillier said in the, and the space syntax method said, we're going to use the, not only the integration, we use the parameter, the, the component of choice as the component to use, as the measure to use how the space used by the locals. Choice is the showing us how the space used by the locals and which spaces are going to be more used as a bypass or something. And the recent uh, work shows that we have to use the normalized choice and normalized integration, which shows the integration to all the city. I mean, different spaces by different spaces. This is the normalized choice for the city uh, for that block by the segment analyzers. For this part, we use the segment analyzers instead of the uh, axial map to have more data about the city. And the same normalized integration for the 2003, the same for the 2018. As you see, the, we have the changes in here in angular choice in here and comparing with before. And what we have, in 2018, the same. But the when we are going to analyze the, uh, the area, we the normalized choice and integration are not very important. What's what was very important is the correlation between them through the time to show us if we have more coherent space or we lose something in the space. Uh, by different graphs that we analyzed, we found that the integration, the correlation between them increased at the same time, the nine and Nash for all of the buffer areas and also for the global uh, measure we, as a 2400 meter for a neighborhood is more than enough. Uh, it increased. So it show us we have more coherent space and the space is more used according to the methodology. If you want, you can refer to this, uh, to the article. And if we are going to the tables, they show that uh, the, the values of the spaces which are going to be used, they use very much by the people who are in the uh, closed neighborhood, in closed neighborhood by the locals. Although we have the use for all, but at the same time, we have more use of the space by the locals. So it means that if I want to summarize in very fast to going to the end, uh, if we're going to say what's happening in the bazaar, we have to say that the highly use of the space happened by the analysis of the uh, axial maps, it shows that it's going to be not only locally at the same time globally used. So it shows that the vitality of this space, because I passed through uh, most of the most of the thinkers, most of the uh, researchers believe that the people presentation in the space is one of the uh, factors of the liveability and what we discussed uh, or what we can understand as a vitality of the space. When we have more people, more space used, it means we have more people are presenting in the space and it means that we have more vitality in that space. So we achieve more vitality, but since the local measures are 
uh, ahead, it means more vitality by the local residents. At the same time, we have the increase of the use of the space. So the recent replanning of the city in modernization, not only help to the bazaar to be more connected to the other uh, neighborhoods, it's also helped to the city to have more coherent and more use of the same space in the city. And on the other hand, the bazaar as a local measure, as a very important meeting space in the city, uh, considering to the different mobility modes which people are using now, it's more used by people who are using by the, the, the I mean, walkable spaces. So that spaces are locally and globally used. So again, at the same time, we have more vitality and it's improved the new uh, design of the city by that square. What we think that is going to be decrease the use of the bazaar, it improved the vitality of the public space as a block in that block. So we have more use of the space at the same time. Thank you. I try to make it completely fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for your presentation. And now it's time for the questions. Does anyone from our, uh, our room has questions? So that everyone can, can listen. Um, so I was wondering, you have a, you have a nice research, a nice script, a nice you also do, do expression complaints. Um, what I want to know is, what is the real life problem that you want to solve with your research? And so, what is the real life case that such a um, such an um, estimation of the inside of those houses is used, is used for something. Because when you estimate, you don't have the real floor plan. You have something that can be the potential. So you cannot use those floor plans, for instance, for refurbishment. Uh, because also you said that there was, there was some, uh, so you estimate the number of, uh, the number of rooms uh, and you estimate the position of them but with the variation of one meter, for instance, that's a lot for a refurbishment. So, so when is that uh, result helpful? Yeah, this can, can be helpful in previous uh, analysis um, because uh, in analysis like uh, the cost, if we know um, uh, with uh, a difference of one room, uh, which is one and one row, uh, and maybe one um, uh, one window, you can uh, make some estimation of, about the cost. And um, we are trying to implement this, but uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we think that we can use that to, to do previous uh, energetic analysis. Maybe um, we are to decide to work on these uh, uh, buildings uh, before we cut down information. Uh, before we drop an uh, information for that. So um, like uh, this method is quite um, indirect. Maybe uh, this um, in a previous stage, you can inform us about the characteristics, the main characteristics of the buildings to decide uh, if we should um, uh, make a great intervention or a light intervention. Um, uh, in this uh, kind of uh, period, uh, uh, I would like to have more time to talk about that, but uh, we do in the University of Colonia, we did a project uh, which is called the Metal Scapus. And um, we try to use this, um, this methodology and other, uh, uh, other um, techniques to uh, estimate the interior of, uh, of apartments, and this way 
circumstances, um, the issues, uh, 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 non city. Uh, I mean, uh, without going to there. Uh, so uh, in this kind of field, that could be even more interesting. Uh, I know that this is not uh, reliable information for an executive uh, project. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about a, a previous analysis and previous uh, steps. I'm sure that the municipalities uh, make some decisions about uh, uh, rehabilitate um, a neighborhood or a, or a block or several buildings. And if they can have the information for that, that will be um, uh, that will be better because uh, uh, this kind of studies uh, going to each house or, uh, or each uh, building um, and see the characteristics um, are quite uh, quite long. Um, it costs uh, money. So if we uh, can like that or we can do that more directly or previously, maybe that will be helpful. I don't know if that uh, answers your question. Um, yeah, it did. Uh, I'm I think that that could be useful for a, for a urban professionals, for a, a municipalities. Um, uh, as I said, uh, we use that uh, with users, with real users. We, uh, we have sent uh, them, uh, oh, we think that could be this way because uh, um, um, they can confirm us or not or verify if uh, we are wrong or not. And we, uh, in the first attempt of that, we, we have seen that it's quite uh, useful the address to the user this way, because if we ask them, um, uh, uh, if you ask them to draw their uh, apartments or to measure their, their apartment, that would be quite uh, difficult to manage that. Uh, so um, this is a, a, a way that we are um, we are uh, uh, assessing if, if that would be useful to approach the user with the Oh, sorry. Can I comment on that? Of course. Um, 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 I don't know if you can hear me or not, or for the artist. Uh, our speaker is uh, understandable. The speaker, can you hear well? The speaker is in the room. Um. Not very clear, but yeah, not very clear. <laughs> if you could come a bit closer to the microphone, uh, as I think you're the shape, I, I'm not very familiar with shape grammar, I just know that it's in some clouds. <laughs> but your work was very interesting, and it's the response is according to my engineering background. I think the shape grammar can give the engineers mostly. Uh, we can have some predictions about the costs. Look on the other side, as the cost managing of the renovation or refurbishment of anything. Uh, what you mentioned about the drawing or people can draw their apartments, they cannot. That's some cost because for the engineers or for the architects who wants to start the refurbishment, having some idea about how it can be even with one meter uh, difference, I think it's very helpful. It's going to help them to support uh, something that is not happening before. So for the municipality to having, a, um, to having some idea about renovation, about that if it's going to be small area, probably it's not very good, but if it's going to be a big area, that can have some a reasonable cost for a small building, probably it's not very high. But if you are a developer, it helps you to have very good background to see if I put this amount of money on this kind of uh, activity or by this kind of building, it's going to be very good. And probably 
the other, the rest is going to be reference to the Ricardo, which was uh, designed, which is going to be designed the same thing by the in the city planning in the as a hybrid how it goes to the city. So developers or the companies can come to see, okay, if we have mixing of yours and him, if we have something between, so what are the areas of the city? Can we go for and putting money on that to do some refurbishment? And what are the gestures about what it can be? At least you have some idea about the amount of money because uh, if you say, I want this block to refurbish, it's more easy for an architect or for a company. But if you are, it's a small plot, but if you're going to talking about a block, that shift grammar can help to have some idea about the, I think, about the collections. Probably, I don't think. Yes. And we, we work with that company, which is a uh, uh, building in a compact city um, uh, from a point of view as uh, um, medium, uh, a medium level of, of homogeneity. It's quite homogeneous, but uh, uh, there are areas more homogeneous, like, um, uh, like social uh, neighborhoods, which are more repetitive even than the compact city. Um, I, I'm, uh, I'm sure that uh, some areas are like, their uh, own city is less homogeneous. So the results depends on the on the homogeneity of the country. So uh, this is um, a medium level. And if you go to uh, to um to uh, to several blocks and you know the characteristics of that, the, the, the results can be better. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. well, if, if I were uh... If I were a real, a real state agent, I would like to have a... <laughs> <laughs> this could be a risk too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a very, very fast... Uh, survey, yeah. And, yeah. But uh, there is uh, another important thing, Mark, that it's, you try to simulate with your space index the way the architect well, uh, puts the, the, the rooms in the... In the floor plan. No. No, but uh, some way you are you are trying to the shape runner simulates some of the architecture. Uh, well, it's also a, a matter of analysis. We could uh, see, for example, with uh, with space syntax, how the rooms are distributed in the uh, But that is an analytical. Theory. And you have an operation of the week. And uh, I think uh, they can combine, uh, ship grammars and space index can combine one operational and not one uh, analytical. <clears throat> but I'm not sure that about that. About if the architects uh, begin this way, this is a possible lecture. Um, probably uh, architects do other way. I mean, consciously, they are. Uh, Try to to make the, the rooms have an access to the facade, for instance. Uh, this is not a, a, this is a possible lecture, not the way that the architects uh, uh, decide. I think. Do I have time to simulate the way the architect examples or values? And no, what would you start in one corner and you go around the perimeter, or architect or something like that? They can do something like that, but I don't think that they begin with that. What I try to understand is the deep model, the deep spatial model, uh, which uh, probably it's unconsciously. Uh, I mean, uh, I think many architects uh, think about in the general shape or how to distribute the, the thing, but they have not found the uh, rooms on the facade. I think that it's a possible analysis, but not the way that the architects design. The result is the same, but I think that's not the way. To step, uh, I was <laughs> uh, And the glasses. And the shirt. Um, I have a question. 
Mormon, we are driving to the bazaar. Uh, and something I didn't understood during your presentation. Yes. I realize uh, that the bazaar has a um, local relevance, uh, as you said, to the city, yeah. uh, because it's organized. Um, although I thought that the bazaar had a global measure of the high performance also, but uh, you focus on the local ones. Yeah. Um, but okay. Yeah, then you said at the end of your presentation when you were talking about the, the transformation that the surrounding area were suffering, that those um, initiatives were increasing the global uh, synthetical qualities of the bazaar. Um, I wonder um, how it can be. I, I suppose that the bazaar already had that global high level of performance in terms of synthetical uh, measures. Yes. But when we are talking about the synthetical measures, as you know, I didn't comment that the bazaar, as it is, doesn't have any global interaction with the city. The first distribution of the, the first representation by the space, by the axial lines, shows that the mostly shows the global representation of the city and what is happening inside the bazaar. So it's completely global. But when we want to discussing about that block, the axial lines cannot answering this because the axial line is because it starts from the end of this street and then ending to, to, and at the end of the same street, which is in the uh, same representation. So we discussed about the segments. Mm -hmm. We start to discuss yes. about the segments. And when we are discussing about the segments, since this is the block and our buffer area is maximum to 2,400 meter, it means it's almost the local measure. Yeah. So at the same time, although we see that we have the increase in the global measure, global in the axial line, in the axial map of the city for that block, because it's the represent, we are looking just a specific block. We are going to clearing and illuminating all of the age effects by 2000 meter so we have the global we can say we have it globally the effect in the small segments are increasing at the same time it shows that this uh, because when you are going to be for instance 2400 and comparing that with 800 and 1200 the 1200 uh, the 1200 is more uh, integrated and more used by choice it means that we have more used by the local measures. And we can say 1,200 1, is the maximum of uh, pass of the neighborhoods in Iran. Even in here, uh, it's almost one mile. Mm -hmm. So it's a neighborhood. As we are saying uh, by the white set, we have 100 and 2,100 and 600. They are the maximum of the one neighborhood. So when you're going more, we see it has a small drop, not very much, but like it has the segment, small, the segment yeah. has a small drop and the angular yeah. choice and angular integration. So we said it's more integrated and more used by the locals. But at the same time, the 2400 has the increase. The generally, all of them has the increase. We tried that also for 300 and it's three, uh, 3,600 and 2,800 also, but we eliminate that because we saw that for all of them, it's the same. So we can say for 2,400, it's the maximum size that we said is okay. It's the maximum size of the neighborhood. And when it's going to be closer, it's the one um, between uh, 12 and 24. So. We focused on that and said it improves the local measures, but at the same time, the global measures are also yes, because bazaar, when we're talking about the bazaar, if you run the same map for all the city, yeah. you have because I run the same map for the, all the city also. It shows you all the bazaar is green, and the most integrated part of the city is the same street and those small segments of the 
the bazaar. So it's completely right. Your so that, that synergy between global and local measures is confirmed. It's confirmed. Yes, okay. it's completely confirmed. Yeah. Uh, that, the that was my question. Yeah, it's confirmed because yeah. the the idea in the uh, we are not focusing exactly on bazaar because uh, in in our research. But the idea is, if we change some layouts close to bazaar, they said, I mean, the municipality, government, and decision makers, they said, we are going to increase this, 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 this. We want to say it is going to be really happened or no. It's satisfied because the old plan is not just making the square. They want to build another assets like bazaar, but in modern condition. So when we just what in one part we analyze that it approved that yes the synergy is going to be yeah. more connected and it's happening yes okay. welcome i i don't think there is questions from the audience if there is no questions from the audience we would like to end the session and then we will be together a quarter to two o'clock with our keynote speaker and we wish to see you again. Bye now. Uh, Forty-five. <laughs> Thank you.